that's the kind of stuff we had to do to make custom thumbnails, which I didn't do because I was like, dude, I don't have time to do that. Okay. No. Hey, this is Elizabeth Potts Weinstein of Elizabeth PW. And today I want to talk a little bit about why I left YouTube and video blogging for about 10 years, really, and why I'm back. Yeah, I've done, I've done some videos to promote my law firm business, but I used to do tons of videos. I used to do video blogging almost every single day, tons of live streams. It was actually the core of my business back in 2009 and 2010, even 2007, 2008, really early in video. And I stopped doing all of that. So why did I stop doing it? And why am I back now? So for those of you who were not around 10, 11, 12 years ago in the world of video, it was a lot different back then. Back in 2007, 2008, 2009, even 2010, live streaming was really hard to do. It was incredibly expensive. I paid hundreds of dollars a month for a platform to do live streaming. The technology was difficult to deal with, and I mean the actual hardware. It was complicated to even do regular videos. To do HD, yes, you could record in HD that you finally were able to do that. I had a flip camera that I actually probably still have in a drawer somewhere because I just love flip cameras so much. Um, but a lot of people weren't able to even watch HD. So these iPhones were not owned by everybody. Android phones that could watch video was not owned by everybody because the, the issue was Video wasn't something that you could just be sitting in a Starbucks somewhere and you could stream video and watch it because the bandwidth didn't exist. It would have been horribly expensive for you to watch video sitting in a coffee shop. So no one did that. Not that many people were watching streaming video from a, on a mobile device. It was mostly something that people did on their computer. Not that much traffic was happening on video versus people reading blog posts and things like that. So it was much more difficult to base a business around video than it was around text. And that really is what it comes down to for me back then is this was something that I needed to be a business. I needed to be able to monetize it because I'm a single mom and I have to pay the rent and buy groceries. Back then, you couldn't just set up a YouTube channel and start monetizing after you got a certain number of people subscribed and be able to make money to, to pay the bills just purely on advertising revenue and maybe some affiliate revenue. That just didn't exist 10 years ago. You wouldn't have been able to get enough traffic. I don't even know if the advertising program was set up quite yet. So it was hard to generate revenue that way. I did generate thousands of dollars in, you know, a month every month by selling information products. There were and I had affiliate programs. There were ways to generate revenue, but it was much more difficult because it, things were not streamlined the way they are now. Big businesses hadn't figured out that you can enter into partnerships with influencers who have YouTube channels and, and Instagram channels and what have you, and be able to make money that way in those kind of relationships versus now, all that stuff is already set up. It's much more streamlined to be able to monetize video than it was back then. So 10 years ago, I moved away from that video focused based business to work on my legal practice. A legal practice as any service-based business like a life coach or a consulting business or creating websites for people, that's something where you can make money theoretically right away as long as you get go out and get one client, they pay you money to do that service for them or to create that product for them. So it's, it's a kind of business where you can support your family right away in a manner of speaking. 
But there are a number of things that I missed, and that's one of the big reasons that I'm coming back to this. Number one, and one of the re and the number one reason I'm coming back to doing a YouTube channel is that there's a kind of connection that you can get with people over video that it's difficult to do in a service-based business. Now, obviously in a service-based business, you get a connection with your clients or with your customers, but it's just one person at a time. And you have your dozens or hundreds of customers or clients, and that's kind of it. But with video, with a YouTube channel, you have this kind of intimate connection because it's like you're talking to people one-on-one, -on -one, but you can have hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands or millions of people who are connecting with you. So you can have this community of people who are learning, who are getting a benefit of what you're sharing, and you're developing a relationship with them, it, that it's the way that you can communicate with people and the kind of relationships that you can have, it's absolutely amazing. And you can get that on with video much more than you can in other kinds of media, um, even audio, and especially with text, because the way video is one-on-one. -on -one. I'm looking right at you and you're looking right at me and it is like we are having a one-on-one -on -one conversation, but I'm having it with a whole bunch of different people. It's, it's an amazing media that way. Another reason I wanted to start this channel or relaunch this channel right now is because I have a secret plan. So about in about three years, when my son graduates from high school, I plan to well, get rid of all my stuff or put it in storage, whatever, and start doing a lot of traveling. When I do that, I want to have uh, a business set up that will go with me. Now, I can definitely take my law firm business with me, but I also want to have something else, too, that will fit into what I'm doing at that time. So the idea of starting, restarting my YouTube channel now, three years ahead of time, means that I have three years to build it up to something viable or not, <laughs> okay? So I've started enough businesses by this point that I know in three years, a business will either be successful, it will either be profitable or it won't. In the three years, I have time to launch it, to see what's how it's progressing, to pivot once or even twice and to course correct, to make a bunch of uh, different tactical decisions and it'll either work or won't. I don't wanna launch a channel when I start traveling because I'll be stressed out and dealing with traveling and for the first time and, and all that. I wanna do that and do it now when my life is relatively stable so I can work out all the technical details and figure things out before I get on the road. Another great reason to start a business right now, including a YouTube channel, is that we are currently living in a time of high flux. So I'm recording this video in June of 2020. This is a very high flux, high change time in, well, not just the United States of America, but probably the whole world. Starting a business in a recession or a depression when the economy is down can be a very good thing because you may be one of the only businesses that are there and because many businesses may not survive. And if you can be the one they buy products or services from, that may be the, one of the reasons that will help you be successful. But it can be difficult to start a business in a recession or depression if that if you're, that time is very stagnant because it's just difficult to get anything started. People aren't willing to switch to you. People aren't open-minded to new ideas. Strangely, we're in a time where the economy is depressed and there's either a recession or depression going on, but we are in a time of high volatility, high flux. People are open to change and that can be good or bad. I'm not saying this is a good time. It's that it 
just is. It, it's just a high volatility time. So that means if you start a business or YouTube channel, and YouTube channel can be a business, things can happen very fast. That can be good or bad. It could mean that you crash and burn very fast, but in a way, if it fails fast, then you can pivot and start something else. But the idea is that things are gonna happen very quickly right now, more quickly than they normally would. So you can take advantage of that by starting a new business, by uh, do, doing anything new that you want to do, anything you wanna change your life because it's more possible to change things quickly now, to change people's minds quickly, to do this activism work you wanna do, you have a book you wanna launch, a, any sort of uh, message you wanna get, out, whatever it is, now is the time to do it because it is more likely for things to happen quickly now than they would in a normal time. Again, this is Elizabeth Potts Weinstein of Elizabeth PW. If you liked this video, please go ahead and hit the like button below and feel free to subscribe if you'd like to hear more about this journey or be part of this journey. And I love to hear from you if there's anything that you are relaunching or redoing right now in your life. Please go ahead and, and share that below. You know, if you're getting back involved in a hobby, if you're getting back involved in activism work, if you're relaunching your YouTube channel, of course, if you're restarting a business, if you're getting back to working on the book that you're always working on, whatever it is, I'd love to hear about it. Again, this is Elizabeth Potts Weinstein. Thank you guys so much for watching. Talk to you guys next time. Bye-bye. So if you want to see some of the kind of videos that I used to do, there's the very first video that I ever put it on YouTube is still up it is absolutely terrible. I don't know what is going on with my hair, um, but I left it up just because it's from 12 years ago and it's great to see how terrible it was. And I also have some videos that hold up. They're actually still half decent quality. I used to do a lot of videos outside and a lot of videos in my car. And I think that they're great examples of the old style of videos that I used to do. I'd also like to share about how hard it was to do the cool stuff people do on YouTube now. Like for example, thumbnails. You couldn't just upload a custom thumbnail back in the day. You had to get a good thumbnail. You had to take that, that rectangle that you wanted to be your thumbnail and hack it to be your custom thumbnail by putting inserting it into the middle of your video as the exact frame of your video. No one could see it because it was just one single frame. It would just show up for a, you know, 1 24th of a second. No one would be able to tell it was there. But then if it was right in the middle, YouTube will give you a choice of either the first frame of the video, or the last frame, or the middle frame, and then you would pick the middle frame and that would be your custom video. That's the kind of stuff we had to do to make custom thumbnails, which I didn't do because I was like, dude, I don't have time to do that. Okay.